Mr. Alan Messick, who I cannot wait to hear his presentation because when I asked him what he wanted to present on, this is about the last breed that I thought he would ever pick. So I am so confused. Wait, I picked it? You did. I said, what do you want to do? And you said, hey, let me do AFL. And I was like, um, okay. I so totally expected you to pick like a Brit or something. I, I'm confused. So why, why'd you pick these? Because I already had the topic done. Okay, that works for me. I like that. I've been, that it totally I've been makes going sense. crazy over the last few weeks. I'm now sick as a dog. Well, we're glad I have that no you voice. want it. So. I had already had this con conference done. I wasn't actually going to admit that tonight. I wasn't going to let you all believe that I had. Oh, but it's something different, for though. Famous. But um, somebody was going to wrap me up because I did this at Ohio State Convention like 10 years ago. But I did spend my day in the airplane modifying it and updating it. And one of the things I got to do was to add the that Fuzzy Lock won Best in Show at a convention in 2017. Previous to that, the breed actually has a, a pretty good history uh, with wins. In 2001, it won a group for youth at a convention. In 2009, it uh, won a group and open. 2003, remember Blair Inslee? She, was a, she had a, the first Best in Show at Fuzzy Lock, the 03 convention in Wichita, Kansas. And of course, California's own Lena McGee in 2017, she took it home. Um, back in Indianapolis. So the breed for um, up until the mid 2000s was considered one of the youngest breeds. It was actually recognized in 1988. And uh, previous to that, when I got into rabbits, they were like the newest breed of rabbit. And until Triantos were recognized in 01, uh, Mini Satins in 05, and of course we've seen Lion Heads and Arjun Brent since then. So um, I still consider them kind of a new breed, but they're an established breed. And these four giant ones. <coughs> really give them some credibility. Um, Look I've how young you There's Baby Allen. <laughs> You're a baby. Baby Allen was like 12 years ago. <laughs> but um, there was a chat this week on Facebook on the sixth class group, you know, thinking about legendary breeders that have really marked our time. This guy wasn't mentioned. Um, sadly, was, he died before his time. But Brian Hartzell was, um, was, an, was a rock star. He was an idol when I was growing up in Rabbits. Um, and if I had to name somebody, in my lifetime that I looked up to as a kid, it was this guy. He raised amazing fuzzy lops, and as a fuzzy lop breeder at the time, um, I thought he was a god. And he also made beautiful Jersey Woolies. In fact, he recognized the broken Jersey Woolly variety, which I think Michelin back there, is the variety you know, really brought the, the breed to new levels. So anyway, got to Judges Rabbits in 08, and he won like every class, and he would be the kind of guy that would win one through like 15, and they would just be remarkable rabbits. So. Um, We'll never forget him. Some of us are lucky enough to have judged his rabbits and known him. Look at that, right? 1989, wow. the very first Fuzzy Lop to invest in breed at a convention was owned by Helen McKee. She's from the Carolinas. She's still around. Some of you Jersey Woolly ladies, she's here? Yeah. No way. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, sweetest lady. She won the very first best of breed. And that's what they looked like back then. That was taken in West Coast Classic. I think it was this year, uh, owned by Burbridge's and Greens. Totally different, right? Talk about evolution of breeds, Mike brought it up. Breeds have evolved over time. Um, and we'll talk about some of the standard changes that have reflected that. Very, very similar to what he said about the dwarf evolution from a flat, low rabbit to a higher, more showy, showy breed. I took this question right here. Obviously, I didn't finish editing that. I meant to text it to Carol Green and find out what the, who this rabbit was. But I think it's a really contemporary photo of, of the breed today. Okay, defining breed character. I love the term breed character. We talk about it in Angora goats all the time, so I like to bring it to the rabbit house too. Is the American Fuzzy Lop a wool breed? Because you think fuzzy, it's in the name. Does wool define the breed? We're gonna spend more time talking about that in a second, but I wanna show you this. Oh yeah, we're gonna do this first. Okay, these are wool breeds, right? English Angora, 57 points on wool. French Angora, 55 points on wool. Giant Angora, 55 points on wool. Satin Angora, 60 points on wool. More wool points than any other breed, by the way. Jersey Woolly, I'm judging the national show with Scott. Scott tomorrow, 27 points on wool. Still, about a third of the standard, right? Ah, okay, they don't have wool, but they are the, the highlight of my life. Angora goes, 50 points on mohair when you look at their standard, okay? Those are wool animals that are commercially viable. That is a preface to this. Carol Green made this chart a bunch of years ago. I think it, 
she's a scientist, so she makes everything just tangible. I saw this in, a, in one of her conferences, I was like, oh my God, Carol, I'm stealing this. So all credit goes to Dr. Carol Green, longtime fuzzy lap reader, but look at this. The big points are right here. Is wool one of them? No, it's a small part. It is a rabbit with wool. It's not a wool rabbit. Okay? Well, let's go back. I want to not, not too carry away. Do you see this right here? This is a big part. This is breed character right here. It's the head. In fact, the breed is called the head of the fancy. No breed in our standard gets more points on the head than the American Fuzzy Law. It is tied with the number of points for body, which is also 30 points. So significant points here and on the body. The head of the fancy is the breed motto. If you're a member of the Fuzzy Lop Club, it's on all of their guidebooks and magazine publications for years. No wonder why, 30 points. Again, no breed gets more points on it. Look at that head. That's breed character. When you see that, you know that's a Fuzzy Lop. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous head. So that makes me want to fall in love with a breed. So Back, Fuzzy Lop's not just a woolly Holland. It's a Fuzzy Lop. It's a Fuzzy Lop. It's its own breed, their, their, their own definition. Gotcha. I, but I actually think their history has something to do with the, the standard problems that we're talking about in a second, the old standard problems. Um, to make fuzzy lops, it wasn't the simple fact of breeding an Angora rabbit to a Holland lop like it was debated. No. Any Holland lop breeders in the room? Over here, right? Have you ever seen a fuzzy lop in your barn, even though if you don't raise fuzzy lops? Absolutely. Because they just pop up, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. She's alive. The Holland lop breeders' famous last words. I've never had a fuzzy lop born in my barn. Um, <laughs> In the 80s, when the Holland Lops were being developed, Fuzzy Lops were popping up in litters. They were consistent. Patty Green Carl got the breed recognized in 88. Um, I think in those days, we were really keen on breed division and separation and uniqueness. It's a very American kind of thing to do. So the breed said, all right, we're going to be this brand new breed. We're going to be really different than Holland Lops. Well, I hate to tell you, but they're like twin sisters, except that there's a little bit of wool. It's like, we'll look at their head. <coughs> All right, we'll talk about that in a second. But 30 points on head, we'll go back to this. It's undeniable. There are three parts to the head. In any breed, if you're going to talk about head, by the way, any breed that has points on head has three components. Size, shape, and set. I like numbers. I'm a really bad math person, but numbers for me help me to understand things better. If you take 30 points, I like to divide them by three and give each 10 points. That's not in the standard. It can be debated, you can argue with me, and that's totally fine. But for me, that's how I give the, those components each their own, their own merit. Um, so when judges say, you know, the animal has a good head, it's not really doing it enough credit. There's 30 points. It's like taking satin fur and being able to evaluate it on the texture, the length, the length of the guard hairs, the presence of the guard hairs, the proportion of the guard hairs, the sheen, okay? Those things go into depth when you talk about satin fur, right? The same kind of energy should be given towards evaluating a fuzzy lop's head. Component one, size. The head, this is a direct quote from the standard on page 65. The head shall be massive in appearance. It is what you see. In the late 90s, when I got into rabbits, I was at a midnight show in Massachusetts, uh, the area where I grew up, and I remember I bumped into a carrier of uh, fuzzy lops owned by Sandy Noonan. She was one of the breed matriarchs. And oh my, I fell in love. I had to, I had to have this breed after I saw them because they were like Persian cats in a carrier. Those heads were huge, like grapefruits, pushed in faces, and then kind of wool. Like their, their heads were so big that you could barely even see the wool. I don't think you see those fuzzy lops anymore. But in those days, the head size really mattered, and I still think it matters today because the standard hasn't changed in that regard. But it needs to be massive. Look at this picture right here. It's an old photo, actually. I think it's one of Brian's. Um, that massive head and a short, compact body. There's no doubt about it. The head has mass. It's powerful. Um, sometimes we talk about head to body proportion. One part head, two parts body. Who's ever heard a judge call the head hunter? If you raise Holland Lops, Dwarfs, Jersey Woolies, Fuzzy Lops, like if you're really going to be really mean and critical, you go, oh, so-and-so is a headhunter. Okay, that's not a nice thing to say, but in a breed with 30 points on head, it's our obligation. Is it not? If you call me a headhunter and I'm judging fuzzy lops, I'll probably kiss your feet. Here's that one to uh, two part ratio. You've got one part head to two parts body. This really kind of makes it all into a more of a visual. 
Number two component when it comes to head is the shape. Direct quote from the standard. The head shall have good width beginning at the base of the ears. Oops. Beginning at the base of the ears. And carry down between the eyes to a well-filled muzzle. So if you want to talk about the parts of the head, you have the brow here, you have between the eyes, and then you have the lower muzzle. Sometimes we call them the cheeks. Same thing. Um, even really good heads can be faulted. Look at this one. It starts off with good width of brow and curvature, but then it gets narrower here between the eyes and then fills out with a really beautiful fat face or a lower cheek and muzzle. Third, mm -hmm. that should be number two, we're still in shape. Um, we talk about depth to width ratio. Mike talked about it when he did his talk, meaning that if you have um, depth of body, it should equate to width of body. So it's a one to one ratio. Or if you have width of body, it should equate to its depth of body. So depth should equal width. We talk about that body type. We don't often talk about it in head. But when you think about it, when you have a rabbit that's equal in depth and width, you get roundness. The same thing actually happens with a head. If the head is to be round, then the point from the brow to the base of the mouth should be equidistant from the width of the head front on between the eyes. This gives a round appearance. So these are equal distance, depth equals width. So depth of head equals width of head. It's not something we talk about, but I, but I, 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 I talk about it. But I think it could be used actually in a lot of breeds where you talk about roundness of head. Dwarfs, Jersey Woolies, Holland, and Fuzzy Love all have round heads, where the depth equals the width of the head. And it gives that, look at that gorgeous face. Is that not a Fuzzy Love face? It really is pretty. That should make anyone fall in love with Fuzzy Love. Uh, more on shape. Look at this head. It's deeper than it is wide, therefore it is square or maybe rectangular in shape. I tried to find the ugliest head possible. Thank you, Google Images, for this really you wretched did. fuzzy lock. Yeah. You succeeded. Yeah. <laughs> you, could probably, you could probably put, the put tulips in with that trowel of a head. It's yeah. really, really bad. It has no curvature. It's super long. You see the eyes when you look at it from the front. A really good fuzzy lock head when you look at it front on. Like a hollow lock, you won't even see the eyes because the head is so massive. They have so much width between the eyes. Uh, the Jersey Woolies as well. So some, some really negative words. Long, plain, and overall lacks roundness because it doesn't have that depth width ratio of, of width of head versus the height or the depth of the head. Shape again, I spend a lot of time talking about shape because shape really is a, a really iconic feature of the breed. From the profile side, this is the profile side, you want to see curvature from the brow or the you know, top of the head over the brow, nose, and then into the lower cheeks. If this you know, shape continued, it would really be a circle. <coughs> this one, zero curvature, it's very sharp. Um, we hear the word promising a lot. I'm not a fortune teller, so I hate using the word promising when I judge. But this rabbit will never have a promising head. I don't care if you're a genie in a bottle. Um, and you really think that it's, it's just not yeah. ever going to be promising. It's always going to be an angular, long, flat head. This one, on the other hand, is a junior, probably the same age. You can see the curvature in the breed character about the skull and the brow, the cheeks, right? So even juniors can have good head size and shapes. The same goes for does. That statement should really follow that, that, that juniors and female rabbits or animals tend to be considered lesser when it comes to head shape and size, but in actuality, they can excel in those, in those regards. Set is probably the, one of the most debated topics. Um, previous to the 2006 standard, the body description of a uh, fuzzy lob read like a Florida white, like verbatim. Rise from the base of the ear to the top of the hip, and I mean, it was a very extreme top line. All well and good, right? You can say that Helen's Fuzzy Law from 1988, well, it didn't have that kind of top line. I mean, it, it could have had that ability because its head was low. The problem is that in the head description, it described a high headset. Okay, put it in context. Take a Florida White. So remember, a Fibber Biggie Florida White, like super deep. And then put the head high on its body. Do you have a top line that rises like Florida White? No. So for 15 years, the breed existed with a huge controversy. It called for a head up here, like a hollow lob, and a body like a Florida White. So 
uh, in 06, standard changed, thank God, and it now calls for a medium headset. Makes sense, you can still see a bit of rise, like this one right here. This is uh, Clara Hill, she's from California, she won Best in Show with a lion head last year at the convention. She also raises gorgeous fuzzy locks. Um, and I love this photo because it's obviously got a high headset, there's no doubt about that, right? But you can actually see a little bit of rise here too. So in a hollow lop, you would see a level top line, yeah. correct, and a high headset. In a fuzzy lop, you see an elevated head with still some rise in top, okay? And uh, the, the exact wording is the head shell set close and of medium height on the shoulder. Uh, in other words, high headset. So it's not a hollow lop and it's not a mini lop. Mini lop being low headset, hollow lop being high headset. So my personal debate is, well, if you have a low headset, do you fault its head or do you fault the shoulder that's created the head to be low? Does that make sense? <coughs> so my interpretation is, well, the head is described in terms of placement and height in the head description, not in the body. And I looked at the body description, I'll show you the quote in a second, but um, it says that the basically the hips should rise slightly from the shoulders. So yes, a low shoulder will give you a low headset, so you can fault it there. But in essence, for me, the, the big thing, set, headset, is something that we fault in the head standard, okay? So the head shell set, close, and of medium height on the shoulder. Actually, the body description is the shoulders are slightly less wide, less deep. It's a little more vague. Does that make sense? You know, what, what, do you, what do you fault, the shoulder that makes it low or the head that's actually not high? but I think it's the head that's not high. So in other words, you fault the head, which is set, which is the third component of head. Here's one that's too high. I mean, if you took the wool out of this, it would look like a really cute hollow lop, right? Mm -hmm. No wonder the breed developed from the hollow lop. Um, this is like old school fuzzy lop right here. This is what my fuzzy lops look like. Low head set. This is not a Fibber McGee Florida white top line, but you can see that this is the body type that the old standard described, that there was this very clear rise in top line. Now imagine putting the head up here. You wouldn't see that. So the old standard thankfully worked over that. But I still bring it up because it was painful. And the Jersey Woolies, right, ladies, kind of went through the same thing up until recently. So it's more defined now. Remember, Amber, you get, we've all had chats about this at the table. Uh, but those kind of things, when, when those, are, those are big deals in a breed standard when they're written wrong. They, they throw not only the judges off, but they throw what the breeders are trying to do back home in their barn because they're trying to come up with something that the judges are all going to come to consensus on, and none of the judges could. Um, body, short coupled and close, compact. It's a, it's, a, it's a compact body. I love this photo. It's also a Brian Hartzell rabbit. It won best of breed at the 06 convention. Big old head, short compact body. You can see the gradual rise in top line, exhibiting a medium headset. High point over the loin, like I think we counted it. I went through the standard recently, it's like 35 breeds actually define where the high point should be. It's no different. Body falls really flat, oh my gosh, clearly. Peaks too early, like in the center of its back, never a good thing. We went, some of the other conferences tonight really uh, poignantly uh, describe those things. And you know, the rabbits, we're not comparing rabbits to giraffes or rabbits to gerbils, right? They're all rabbits, so we can learn from other talks because we're all speaking the same language, we're all speaking rabbits. Peaking too early and long and flat never go for most breeds of rabbit. Um, feet and legs, so bone oh, does wow. not get a lot of, no, this is good, I'm glad it's naked. It gets only five points, but bone has a lot to do with mass, power, head shape. Fine bone fuzzy lops will not have or exhibit the massive skull and that power that, that we fall in love with with the breed. So we look at bone and the front legs primarily to check that, and that's legs are to be um, short and thick, like a hollow lob, right? Short and thick. Exactly, like bear paws, I like to say, bear paw front legs. Or tree stumps. I think Chris Emmy says tree stumps. It's a good analogy. Oh, and by the way, I like it if naked because you can actually see uh -huh. the bone without the fur effect. Mm -hmm. They have normal fur in their front feet and legs. It's a DQ if they have wool from the ankle joints and tips of the toes. 
So this one has no fur at all, not even wool, but mind you, but you can still appreciate the diameter of the bone. Posing, it's a natural um, pose, it's pretty basic. Medium headset, you don't want to jack them up so that they become a full arch breed. Um, the wool hides things, so if you really jack them up, you get my headset, and you think, wow, this is a really high headset, fuzzy love, I just love it. Well, put your hand under its body to make sure that you don't have this six inches of daylight, pretty much, and you have a full arch breed at that point. So wool can hide things, including um, what you're trying to do when posing. Here's one that's too high. It's a beautiful rabbit, and then, but it's a little bit too high, and then you've got this level top one, like, oh, I'm not too low right there. That's like old school body type. That's what my fuzzy looks look like. Really low, really old school. Uh, back to the naked picture. Because of the, the false headset, you know, like I just said, you can really make a headset by posing, and then the wool covers it, unless you're naked. If you're naked, then you can see that it, well, you've got daylight here. And this is really posed like a uh, petite, well thing. And then look at it, it destroys the body. Like, the hips look really sloped, okay? Um, ears, sister breeds, hollow lops, like the same thing, you know? Um, round at the tips, these are beautiful ears. Oops. By the way, they're not, I'm gonna confess, they're not fuzzy lop ears. Are they hollow lop, lop ears? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find one good enough. Um, <laughs> so these are just, aren't they gorgeous? How, why they are here? and they're really round at their tips. Um, ears are five components, length, shape, substance, furring, and placement or set. Well furred, wow, rounded, well lopped. Half inch to one inch, isn't that verbatim from home off standard two for ideal length of ear? Should be about half inch to one inch below the jawline. Now this is another thing that defines them from the hollow lob. Hollow lobs give eight points on crown. Fuzzy lobs, I don't know why, don't give any points on crown. Okay, well you can say, well then a crown's not important. Well, crown is important because a crown defines where the ear should be. The breed does fault for slipped ears. Defines what the ear base should look like. If you don't have a, a wide crown, you won't have a wide opening to your ear. Oops. You won't have a wide opening to the ear, right? If you have a very narrow crown, you'll come out of the ear base very narrow. If you come out of the ear base very narrow, what do you think happens to the rest of the ear? Folds. Looks like a tube. Folds, yes, exactly. So. I think it's kind of an injustice that the breed doesn't have points on a crown because the crown um, really is uh, influential in a lot of other things to do with the ear. If you have a tight crown, keep in mind there's no points on crown. If you have a tight crown, you get what I call fuzzy ups. Sometimes I call them holland ups and the holland up. These are, their the crown is so tight that the ears go like this. Um, so you can, of course, disqualify lock breeds with ears over the horizontal. Um, juniors are, you know, like hollow lop juniors, they can be excitable and their crown hasn't developed yet and with, I keep talking about the crown, which gets no points, but it affects a lot of stuff. Um, so you have to give it a little more lenience to those juniors to make sure that the, they give some time to be relaxed. Again, crown gets no points, but it defines ear carriage, it defines ear placement, and it defines the ear base shape, which consequently defines potentially the rest of the shape of the ear. It's a wool rabbit, but not a wool breed. So wool is an adornment. It's kind of like the Jersey Woolly premise in the 80s when Bonnie Seeley made the Jersey Woolies. She wanted a little Angora that wasn't gonna take all of her night and day to keep it maintained. She could have, you know, in, in her house in New Jersey, right? Really, it's the same kind of wool. A lot of guard hair, a little coarser to the touch and it's something you don't necessarily have to groom every day. Juniors are a little different because they're softer, they're primary coats. Uh, this was also a, a Brian, oops, a Brian Hartzell rabbit. He had gorgeous wool on his rabbits. I mean, even had wool length. I remember the guard hairs would drape over the coats and just kind of caress the table. They were fabulous. You can actually see the guard hairs down here caressing the table. They were beautiful. So the wool is slightly coarser in nature, disqualifies seniors for being too soft. Um, it's okay to have some softness, of course, in juniors, and some leniency should be given to those. So where is the wool? It's uh, everywhere but the face, the ears, and the front feet. So you can disqualify for wool below the ankle joint to the toes. It's actually only a fall for wool in the ears and wool in the face, believe it or not. I don't think I've ever seen a fuzzy lop in the U.S. that had wool on the face and the ears, but if you did see it, it would not be a disqualification. It would just look really strange. 
In fact, it would look like this rabbit, which I found hmm. in mass population in Indonesia. It's called a teddy, or a local breed. Scott, you've judged them before. Shirley, we're seeing them. Were they in, in UK. Malaysia? Yeah, no. they have in UK. You're right. Are they called teddies there? Uh, no, I think they're, are they still cashmere's? Oh, maybe, yeah, they're cashmere. So, in other words, it's like a fuzzy lop, a low headset, but it actually has wool covering its ears and covering its face. It's just a food for thought. I thought it was a fun kind of... <laughs> They're very funny rabbits to look at, and they're in mass quantity in Indonesia. Sometimes we'll judge like 50 of them. I'm like, I don't, know, I don't know what to judge it on. What's your standard? Or he's like, I don't know. You can just go in there and do it. They are kind of cute. They're very popular pet stores. Okay, um, texture, I already said, but if it feels like too soft, like an English Angora, it should be disqualified. One of my favorite words for negative things when it comes to texture is hairy. The Jersey Woolly ladies from California know this really well. I hate hairy wool. It has like luster and no crimp and it lies flat. It's a totally just, I don't even want to touch it. But you see this, you find it really, you find it a lot in blacks and black otters. Look, do they, does it not like almost shine? Because it has so much of the wrong kind of guard hair with no crimp and undercoat to back it up. Um, it's, I'm going on and on about it. It's not a DQ, it's just undesirable. Okay. <laughs> Really undesirable. <laughs> Keeps me up at night, honestly. Uh, color is a very insignificant part of the breed. It's small stuff. I think for people studying for their tests, or if you're judging and you're like, you know, oh God, I don't want this variety to pass under me and I didn't see it, don't. Um, you don't want to find tan pattern and you don't want to find ticked group. Those two groups are not recognized by Fuzzy Lops. That means no otter, no silver martin, no smoke pearl martin no steel. Okay, those are big varieties in, in some other breeds. You see them in hollow lops, both of those groups. Of course you see uh, ticks in mini lops, French lops, and English lops. So those two groups are not, not fuzzy lops groups. I'd say maybe the biggest color topic though is stable point. If you put correct stable point, if you actually read the standard about what it what stable point color is on the body, it's creamy white. If you put creamy white in combination with white to make a broken stable point, okay, you're already talking like a light pattern against a white. Then put wool onto it. Wool has a finer diameter, so it mutes color, all right? This rabbit looks like it only has head markings. I can't show you, obviously, but it has pattern. It's just, it has correct color correct stable point color in a wool breed to put it on broken will look nearly white, okay? I had one disqualified once and I was so heartbroken because I love the rabbit, but it's hard to see. Good, good stable point color on white will look almost white and therefore not uh, maintaining the 10% minimum rule for broken pattern percentage in fuzzy lobs. Uh, thank you very much for having me. I love judges' conferences. I think that more should be done. Stacy, I was bragging about Louisa <coughs> today in the car and to some other people because um, I've been coming down here for about 10 years and I think the state's really, really come up. I mean, you guys are hosting national shows now, you've got judges conferences, so I'm really proud of you guys and I'm really glad to be here this weekend. Um, and, and of course the food, man, you cannot get any better food than here in Louisiana. So, so thank you, Stacey, thank you. for inviting you. me. It was really fun. Uh, we've got a new thing going. It's called The Rabbit Show. I can see from my Facebook friend, you realize that I've been doing it like all over the world. Um, we've got lots of educational stuff coming, so keep watching. We're doing it all live stream tonight, so everyone around the world can enjoy um, what our speakers have brought to us tonight. So thank, thank you very much. You. Thank you. Um, our next presenter, I'm very